blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. be with you. with you. Let us pray. God of truth and sacrifice, we give thanks for your servant William Alexander Gary, who, like the church's first martyr, gave witness to your liberating gospel and echoed Christ's healing words of forgiveness. May we also seek your truth as we offer ourselves in obedience to the same. All this we pray through him who is forever the bishop and reformer of our souls, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When they had heard these things, they became enraged and ground their teeth at Stephen. But filled with the Holy Spirit, he gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they covered their ears and with a loud shout all rushed together against him. Then they dragged him out of the city and began to stone him. And the witnesses laid their coats at the feet of a young man named Saul. While they were stoning Stephen, he prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he knelt down and cried out in a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. When he had said this, he died. The word of the Lord.
Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, Nothing is covered up that will not be uncovered, and nothing secret that will not become known. Therefore, whatever you have said in the dark will be heard in the light, and what you have whispered behind closed doors will be proclaimed from the housetops. I tell you, my friends, do not fear those who kill the body and after that can do nothing more. But I will warn you whom to fear. Fear him who, after he has killed, has authority to cast into hell. Yes, I tell you, fear him. Are not five sparrows sold for two pennies? Yet not one of them is forgotten in God's sight. But even the hairs of your head are all counted. Do not be afraid. You are of more value than many sparrows. And I tell you, everyone who acknowledges me before others, the Son of Man also will acknowledge before the angels of God. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. If we take a backward glance today, it is only that we may gain fresh courage and strength for the future and the great work to which God has called us. Those are words of wisdom and encouragement from our martyr, from Bishop Gary himself. Why do we look back? We look back to remember, to put back together again that which has been broken not exactly as things were before, no, but rather refashioned and perhaps repurposed, restored, renewed, resurrected, redeemed. The martyr's song still sings on every day. Hate's raging ways live on and kill the prophet's song. Will we not right the wrong with our song every day? Those words, this hymn, of course, you know, was written by our dean, our, our resident hymn writer. <laughs> you can laugh at that. Um, <laughs> we, uh, not every congregation has a resident hymn writer, but we do. Um, the bulletin doesn't say that it's from him, that's why I'm pointing it out. But will we not right the wrong with our song? Writing wrongs with our song every day. How do we do that? How do we right wrongs? Is shouting at and over one another in an angry America really working for us? How about inordinate competition and exclusion of others or disparagement of others or insecurity deep within which can lead to suspicion and mistrust and fear and anger and even violence eventually? Will we not right the wrong with our song through our song, 
your song and my song, the hymn writer asks, that is there, is, there is a more excellent way. And that more excellent way is through song and music and poetry and art and dance, through nature and stillness and quiet, through liturgy and worship and prayer and hope and joy and peace and yes, love and justice. Might this that we're engaged in today be a part of that more excellent way, a, a way quite contrary to the prevailing winds of today of condemnation and shunning and the writing off of others. This more excellent way, I believe, is really the only way, finally, to right the wrong, doing so with our song. That is, it all begins with our worship, doesn't it? It has been said that, that true worship, true contemplation, that it turns activists into contemplatives or mystics and mystics into activists. The, that, old, that old poster that used to go around in the Episcopal Church, up off your knees and out into the street. You can't have one without the other. A more excellent way, which is why the, uh, our own low country artist, the celebrated artist, Jonathan Green, who's worshiping with us today. Several years ago, you may remember Jonathan had a vision which he brought to fruition as he always does. And, and that vision that he brought to fruition was called the Requiem for Rice, an actual funeral rite in music and dance and song and art, an actual burial rite for those enslaved persons who labored on rice plantations who died without proper funerals, who were forgotten by society as if they'd never been born. It is a way of remembering, of putting back together again, a way of redeeming, a way, finally, of beginning to heal. Jonathan has this to say, there are ways of being radical and also being a spokesperson and telling a very uncomfortable story that still exists today. And sometimes, Jonathan says, you have to do that through beauty. You have to do that through beauty. Beauty. We are surrounded by beauty, are we not? Enveloped in it. Look at these flowers. Make sure you see, check out the flowers on, at the font as we have a baptism right after this service. Look at this choir, the, this, this choir, if you've been here the, the last couple of Sundays and, or if you've been watching online, you've noticed that the choir, our choir is like the loaves and the fishes. They just continue to multiply. <laughs> Listen to this choir, this organ, the exquisite music that is made here all to the glory of God and to our own spiritual nourishment. There was an old flyer a sheet of paper found around here from a long time ago. Copies of it would have been placed around town, advertising services here. And the flyer read, Grace Church, beautiful music and short sermons. <laughs> I promise I'll try to honor that. Now that we have the full choir back, they, like, they always remind the preacher. But one of the reasons Bishop Gary's martyrdom, his witness, is so remarkable to me is that he was what we would call today a white privileged son of the South in every way. Not in economic terms, to, to, in economic terms because the economy, of course, had been decimated during the Civil War. It was the Reverend Anthony Toomer Porter who would procure a scholarship for Gary to attend Sewanee. Bishop Gary was progressive, but he was also conservative. He was orthodox theologically in the true and the best sense, classic sense of the term. 
but conservative, which to me makes his martyrdom, his witness, all the more remarkable. He wasn't seeking to die for his faith and for the cause of justice. Remarkable because it was about so much more than mere words. It was a life lived and a death embraced. On something such as, say, the matter of divorce, Bishop Gary was unyielding in his opposition to it. But then again, during his lifetime, divorce in the state of South Carolina was not even legal. I say this not that we celebrate such a situation, but we do recognize that it is sometimes simply a part of life. Additionally, I think it would be fair to say that it likely never entered Bishop Gary's mind that females might actually become priests in the church one day. Now, I don't discount him because of that. Why would I, for goodness sake? My point is we might find things, or might not, in his preserved writings, which could sound a little outdated to our 21st century ears. But that is often the way it is with the saints and martyrs. We remember them not because they were perfect or fully enlightened in every way that we might think they ought to be. No. We remember them and are encouraged by them because they were people of their own day who looked to a brighter day. And they shine a light. And they help us to see God. And they help us to believe that we too in our own day can be used by God to help build God's kingdom here on earth. The truth is worth fighting for, Bishop Gary once said, as in the truth is worth struggling for. Will we not right the wrong? There is a more excellent way, and it is through our song, every day. Every day, through our song. What is your song? Amen. Let us offer prayers to God for the saints and martyrs of the church, saying, 
Lord have mercy. For this holy gathering and for the people of God in every place, for our bishop elect, Ruth Woodliff Stanley, for the standing committee of the Diocese of South Carolina, for Michael, our presiding bishop, and for Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, for Voorhees College in Denmark, South Carolina, and the Church of Pakistan, let us pray. For all nations and their leaders, for all peoples, tribes, clans, and families, let us pray. For mercy, peace, and justice in the world, for all those who serve at home or overseas in the military, or in mission or outreach work, for Maxwell, Drew, Labrie, Kurt, Thomas, Ethan, Henry, Griffin, Peter, Dennis, Christian, Brian, Keen, Edward, Justin, Andrew, Francis, and Jake, let us pray. For all those in danger, the poor and the oppressed, travelers and prisoners, that the example of the martyrs may give them courage and the help of believers give them hope, let us pray. In thanksgiving for all the blessings of this life, for the baptism of Riley Elizabeth Paquette and Augustus Eastwood Ante Porter, let us pray. For ourselves, our families, and all those we love, for the sick, Remembering Tom, Joan, Mary, Marion, Rob, Rhett, Liz, Sarah, Ruth, Debbie, Kate, Stephanie, Tom, Bratton, Kenny, Al, Steve, Ben, Chad, Carol, and Dane, let us pray. For all the faithful departed and all who mourn, remembering Jean Frost Walker Myers, Jean Rupert Carpenter, and Emmett H. John, let us pray. For the life and witness of William Alexander Gary, bishop, reformer, and martyr, let us pray. Holy God, mighty God, immortal God, adored by martyrs and praised by the saints. Receive the prayers of your holy church and grant them in accordance with your gracious will, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name, amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Please be seated. I think. <laughs> Welcome to Grace Church Cathedral. Whether watching online or here present in the cathedral, do join us for 
refreshment uh, fellowship together at Hanahan Hall. It's so wonderful to be together again. Uh, next Sunday, just like today, another quiet, introverted service. Not. It's Independence Sunday. Um, you know the colors, red, white, and blue. Uh, it's a different kind of Independence Sunday this year in the sense that it is Caleb's last Sunday with us, and he will be free at last, free at last, thank God Almighty, free at last after next Sunday. We're going to celebrate his ministry in our midst next week, so do plan on coming. A special uh, menu for the day, and we look forward to a grand celebration um, with Caleb and family before we send him off to do missionary work in North Carolina. <laughs> and as I said at the 9 o'clock service, it's a big job, boy. Boy, does it. Um, you know, he is on long-term loan, uh, and so we'll, we'll wish him Godspeed next week. But today, on this very special Sunday, uh, we come to honor those who serve in the light of Bishop Gary, our martyr. You may recall that it was in 2017 we established an award given in honor of the eighth bishop of this diocese, Bishop William Alexander Gary, a bishop, a reformer, and a martyr. And we award this uh, medal uh, every year to individuals who best exemplify the spirit of sacrifice that Bishop Gary modeled in his life and witness as the Bishop of South Carolina from 1908 to 1928. And of course, we have our own beloved Bishop Gary Chapel as a constant reminder of the martyr's example in our lives. Today then, on June the 27th, 2021, the Bishop Gary Medal is to be presented to Mr. Jonathan Green. Would you come forward, please? Jonathan is a creator, restorer, and redeemer of memory and hope. His singular gifts to our world are those of sight, insight, and liberation. As we celebrate Jonathan's international acclaim and visibility as an artist, we also pay tribute to his sacrificial and life-giving work in social and racial justice, for such work is just as powerful, not to mention eternal. Jonathan knows what it means to co-create with the Creator. He embodies the words from our hymn celebrating Bishop Gary's legacy, The Martyr's Song Lives On. And to that we say, sing on, Jonathan, sing on. Congratulations. In love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your heart. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, for the wonderful grace and virtue declared in all your saints, who have been the chosen vessels of your grace and the lights of the world in their generations. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. Now the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. We offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray, you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son and his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit in the fullness of time. Reconcile all things in Christ and make them new, and bring us to that heavenly country where, with the blessed Virgin Mary, blessed William Alexander Gary, and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him, and with him, and in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
gifts of God for the people of God.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. Bring us, O Lord God, at our last awakening into the house and gate of heaven to enter that gate and dwell in that house where there shall be no darkness nor dazzling but one equal light, no noise nor silence but one equal music, no fears nor hopes but one equal possession, no ends nor beginnings but one equal eternity in the habitation of thy glory and dominion. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.